All right, hey guys, welcome uh, to Macroeconomics, Introduction to Economic Concepts. One of the very first, most basic things that we're going to do is going to be um, having to do with the production possibilities curve. All right, so basically what's happening here, we have two different ones. These are both production possibilities curves, and like the name suggests, what these things are showing us is the what is possible to be produced in an economy. Now we're going to simplify it down and we're going to assume that there are only two things that can be made. So in just an intro econ course, that's all you have to worry about. Two possibilities. So we have our y-axis represented by capital goods for both and on our x is consumer goods. So we are saying that companies, people, the country can make only one of those two things, capital or consumer goods. It's their only choice. Now the idea and what we're showing here is that in order for them to make more of one, they have to give up making some of the other. So in other words, this curve in red on both, what that represents is the maximum amount of stuff that can be produced by this country, um, by this economy. So anywhere along this curve, points A, B, C, and D on this one, points A, B, and C on this one, they can produce anywhere along that curve or anywhere inside of it, any combination of goods. So for instance, if we look at point A, what that's representing is that the economy is using all of their resources to make as many capital goods as they can, and they are making no consumer goods to go along with that. So we're at 80 capital goods, zero consumer goods. We move to point B, you can see that now they're making only 70 capital goods, but now they've gained making some consumer goods, 25. And you can go along the points all the way till point D where they are making all consumer goods and no capital goods. So again, what this curve is showing us is merely what is possible, like the name, production possibilities curve. They are not telling us what the, an economy should make. They're not telling us what is the best use of their resources, merely what they can do. So they can operate anywhere along the curve. They can also operate anywhere inside the curve, such as point E, which is inside the curve. This is representing something where inefficiency is taking place. Because inefficiency, we would say, is where um, they could make more capital or more consumer goods without giving up anything else. So they could do more. Um, so this is implying that something negative has happened. Um, if we're talking microeconomics, it could be because something, um, maybe if we're talking an oven, for instance, so a pizzeria, um, they're operating inside their production possibilities curve it's because maybe one of their ovens was broken, so they can't produce as many pizzas or as many lasagnas or whatever it is that they are making. So that would be inefficiency. If we're talking about an entire economy, it could be because we're in a recession, and so there aren't as many people producing things, there aren't as many jobs, there's more unemployment. So again, we have the possibility to produce more, so inefficiency is taking place. So this is possible, it is undesirable, however. Point F lies outside of our production possibilities curve. This is where production is not currently possible. There is no way that we could operate, produce um, the combination of goods found at point F. Um, in order to make that many capital goods, we would have to decrease the number of consumer goods or vice versa. So F is not possible at this time. It could be, but only if we have an increase in our natural resources, physical capital, human capital, things that we'll get to and videos down the road, not for right now though. The other main thing, and what's really important and would most likely be the kind of questions that you're going to face on a production possibilities curve, is that it is showing us opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is probably one of, if not the most foundational, pivotal concepts in economics. Opportunity cost is the idea that the real cost of something is what you give up in order to get it. Now, typically we think of costs as being a dollars and cents thing. So you go um, to McDonald's and you spend $7, we think of the cost of that meal as being $7. While that's true, there is also an opportunity cost, which is the idea that that $7, you no longer have it. So what you could have done, your next best option, you can no longer do with that $7. So if you would have gone to Wendy's or to Chick-fil-A or Chipotle instead, you cannot do that now because you have spent that $7. So you've used that resource, can't use it for anything else now. So you've given up not only the $7, but the opportunity to use that $7 for something else. Now, on this, what we're talking about is in order to make, for instance, all capital goods with no consumer goods, let's say we move from point A to point B, okay? 
So the question can ask you, what is the opportunity cost of moving from A to B? Remember, opportunity cost is what is being given up. So the first thing to look at is, well, what are we gaining by moving from A to B? Well, we're gaining 25 consumer goods because initially at point A, there are zero consumer goods there, and now there's 25 at point B. So that's what we're gaining. So that's not the opportunity cost. What are we giving up? Our capital goods are going from 80 to 70. So very, very basic, simple math. 80 minus 70 is 10. So we are giving up 10 capital goods would be the answer. And with opportunity cost, it is pivotal to label specifically. The number 10 would not be a correct answer. So the question is, what's the opportunity cost of moving from A to B? 10, 10 what? So you have to make sure that you say 10 capital goods. Um, additionally, if we, we could do this in any direction. Let's say we're talking about going from C to B, moving upwards along our PPC. If we're going from C to B, we start with 90 consumer goods and 30 capital goods. So that's our combination, 90 and 30. Now at point B, we're down to 25 consumer goods, but we gain 40 more additional capital goods. So what is the opportunity cost? What's being given up? Are we giving up capital goods or are we giving up consumer goods? Well, we're giving up consumer goods because we had 90 at point C. Now we only have 25. So to figure out the opportunity cost, again, basic math subtraction, 90 minus 25, um, is 65, so we are giving up 65 consumer goods, um, and that's our opportunity cost. Now the last thing, and it's important as well, is why do we have two different PPCs here? One of them you might notice is an abode shape, curved. This one is linear, or at least as well as I could draw linear. So you have the same idea. The numbers here aren't particularly important. They're a little bit different. The idea here from the curved one to the linear. With the linear, we have constant opportunity cost, meaning it's unchanging. Opportunity cost is the same if we go from A to B or B to C. Anywhere along this curve, from C to B or B to A, we have consistent, constant opportunity cost. It doesn't change. So for instance, look at it. Go from A to B. We're giving up 50, I'm sorry, we're giving up 25 capital goods. 50 minus 25 is 25. We're giving up 25 capital goods in order to gain 50 consumer goods. So we're gaining 50, giving up 25. From B to C, it's the same thing. We're giving up the rest of our capital goods, 25 minus 25. Um, there, so we're giving up 25. And we're again still gaining the same thing. We're gaining 50 additional consumer goods. So our opportunity cost is constant on a linear one. The good news is, typically, you're probably going to use this one. It's going to be the linear ones because mathematically it's a lot easier. Um, and so that'll be what we focus on. On this, the first one where we have the bowed shape, with this outward uh, shaped bow, what we have here is increasing oppor opportunity cost is what's on display here. So again, just to look at it, we can prove this. We're going to do two examples from A to B and then from C to D. From A to B, what are we gaining? Well, we're gaining 25 additional consumer goods. What's the cost of that? It only cost us 10 capital goods. So we gave up 10 capital goods. That's our opportunity cost, 10. And we gained an additional 25. Now from C to D, what are we gaining and what are we losing? Well, this time we're only gaining an additional 10 consumer goods. From C to D, we're going from 90 to 100. So we're only gaining 10, but what are we giving up? Now we're giving up 30 capital goods. So what's happening is this is a much higher opportunity cost. We're giving up a lot more. To gain only 10 consumer goods, this time from C to D, we are giving up 30 additional capital goods. Originally, from A to B, we gained 25 and only gave up 10. So this is definitely not in our favor at this point. So we have an increasing opportunity cost the further we go along this curve. So that's why this has the bowed shape. This is honestly a more realistic uh, representation of the economy because it's in real life not so easy to convert resources from one purpose to another um, very oftentimes. But in an Econ 101 class, this will probably be the linear one, the one you stick to a little bit more often. All right, thanks. See you guys next time.